Everybody thinks that the pandemic is over with, but let's hear what the World Health Organization director has to say about that. As countries lift public health and social measures, they must consider the impact on health workers and health systems. Delta and other highly transmissible variants are driving catastrophic waves of case, which are translating into high numbers of hospitalizations and death. Say today is that we are experiencing a worsening public health emergency that further threatens lives, livelihoods, and a sound global economic recovery. It is definitely worse in places that have very few vaccines, but the pandemic is not over anywhere. What is this B one six one seven point two variant? It's still the SARS CoV two virus, but just like we have different strains of influenza. We have different strains of SARS-CoV-2. Is getting up to 19,000 cases a day in the U.S. We were down to 3,000. How serious is this new COVID-19 variant, the Delta variant? How bad is it at this point? The seven-day average of hospital admissions is about 2,000 per day. This also represents an increase of about 7% from the prior seven-day average. In areas of low vaccination coverage, and hospitalizations are up. Further, we are seeing some small clusters and larger outbreaks of COVID-19 in locations such as camps and community events where proper, hard-learned prevention strategies are not enforced and the virus is readily able to thrive. Are these cases really preventable? Let's hear what they have to say about that. The sad reality is that despite our progress, we're still losing people to this virus, which is especially tragic given at this point, it is unnecessary and preventable. Virtually all COVID-19 hospitalizations and deaths in the United States are now occurring among unvaccinated individuals. Okay, so it sounds like it's this is happening because people are not being vaccinated. So there are these uh, people who have problems and they don't want to get vaccinated. There are other people that can't get vaccinated due to other reasons. Then there are the kids that have it has not been approved for them to be vaccinated. So there are various reasons why we haven't gotten to our herd immunity yet. Uh, Yeah, of course, the vaccinations are down. Here we have a vaccine that's highly, highly effective. It's easy to get. It's free. And it's readily available. So, you know, you, you, you've got to ask, what is the problem? Get over it and try and save the lives of yourself. And he went on to say, not just yourself, but to save your family as well. Because we all know if you become infected with the virus, you can bring it home to your family. But if the truth be told, most people recover from COVID-19, even older people. And generally, children are at low risk for COVID. However, the new variant is turning everything on its head. This one is worrisome because the original virus, whatever that infectivity was, the alpha variant or UK variant was about 50% more infectious. The Delta variant is 50% again more infectious. So we're starting to see, we've, we've had outbreaks in five different summer camps for kids as kids are getting back together. And it spreads into the community. We didn't see that with the original virus. So uh, I'm very concerned about school districts that are not going to have masking. I'm very concerned about communities where immunization rates are low. The World Health Organization is fully aware that the vaccines alone will not get us out of this pandemic. Vaccines have never been the way out of this crisis on their own. But this current wave is demonstrating again just what a powerful tool they are. So why is this happening? How come we're having these spikes again? I mean, it sounds like we're going backwards. Let's hear what the World Health Organization, what explanation they have for us about this new wave. Context of a highly susceptible global population because of low vaccination coverage, because of the uneven use of vaccines, 
uh, the inequitable distribution of vaccines worldwide, and the low levels of seroprevalence based on natural infection around the world, largely in many countries who put in very strong measures to keep their populations protected. We also see this in the context of increased social mixing. What I was referring to was the increased social mixing in the context of the relaxation of public health and social measures. It wasn't necessarily related to the event itself. We know many gatherings can be held very safely. WHO has outlined a risk-based approach for small gatherings as well as large mass gatherings, which take into account uh, a risk assessment, looking at risk mitigation measures, looking at risk communication, having plans in place. And in many situations, these events can take place safely. With regard to the broader measures, it is hard for everyone to sustain individual measures without government support. Nobody wants to go back into swinging lockdowns. We've talked about those measures that can reduce the risk of transmission. They don't necessarily stop it, but what they do is they reduce the risk of transmission, especially in the context of these variants, which are more highly transmissible. And what we've seen is vaccines are not perfectly effective at preventing transmission. They're highly effective at preventing hospitalization and death. And it is our view that the two measures together, public health and social measures, individual measures and vaccination working together can keep this disease at some level of control. And those countries who already have reasonable levels of vaccination, please don't have a false sense of security. You can end up right back in that same situation because given the transmissibility, particularly of the Delta strain, it is going to seek out those unvaccinated, unprotected, vulnerable people and it may put them back in hospital or may put them in need of intensive care. We may not have the perfect vaccines in this generation of vaccines, but what we need to do is give every country and everybody a fighting chance to get through this pandemic. People ask me a question, which is one question. When is this pandemic going to end? I say to them, it's in our hands. We can end it very soon. We can end it very soon because we have the tools now. So there you have it. You know what to do. You have the tools to do it. So let's get it done. Let's get through this pandemic. If you like this video, like it, share and subscribe for more videos like this one. Thanks for listening and I'll see you in the next one.